Welcome back. So this video is not in any way required for um, anatomy and physiology. This is a little bit beyond that. But if you're curious to see exactly how it works, I recommend that you watch it. This is more from the biochemistry and organic chemistry perspective, and in a large extent, inorganic as well. So um, I'm going to be continuously flipping between uh, this video right here, which is done by uh, Pearson Education, and my... Uh, paintbrush right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you basically the mechanism of the myosin ATPase and how it might differ from a normal ATPase. And we'll see sort of how it fits in with the sort of macroscopic view of the cycle. So what you have to imagine is first, the way we're starting the cycle in this class is we're starting it basically with myosin already bound to actin. Remember that actin has a myosin binding site on it, and so we're assuming that that binding site is occupied by myosin. And so what's going to happen initially is we're going to get ATP attachment. Okay, so that molecule right there, that yellow pill-looking molecule, that's representative of adenosine triphosphate. Okay. In fact, if you were looking at it on the molecular scale, this molecule right here, do this in red, this molecule is ATP. Okay, I'm going to have to get my smaller brush. That's ATP right there. Okay, it's a nucleotide, right? It has adenine up here. It has the ribose ring and the three phosphates. So what we see here is that when ATP binds, we're going to get something referred to as cross-bridge detachment. Okay, so we go to the video, what we'll see is when ATP binds, this cross bridge between the myosin and the actin is going to break. Okay, so ATP binds, and what you'll see is the myosin kind of detracts a little bit. Okay, and so you see this little gap between the myosin and the actin. Okay, and then we're going to reactivate the myosin head, but we're going to do that by ATP hydrolysis. Now, I mentioned in one of the previous videos, and I'll mention it again, that the conformational change that we see with myosin, the, the many of the conformational changes, are, are basically the largest protein conformational changes that we have in human biochemistry. That's why myosin is perfect as a contractile protein for shortening of muscle fibers. Okay, So when ATP gets hydrolyzed here, what you'll see is uh, we're going to cock the myosin head into the activated position. Here it's deactivated, so notice what happens is that ATP is going to be hydrolyzed. That flash of light was the hydrolysis, in which case we get phosphate and adenosine diphosphate. And when we, whenever we do that process of ATP hydrolysis, right, when we hydrolyze it, oops, let me get out of that, when we hydrolyze ATP, we're going to get a release of free energy that's used to move myosin into the activated position. Okay, if we're looking at that on a molecular scale, let's kind of see what happens. Well, I have this, this gamma phosphate out here at the end. So this right here, this is the gamma phosphate, this is the beta phosphate, this is the alpha phosphate. Well, it turns out that what's going to happen, and I'll do the mechanistic steps in green, this oxygen right here is going to donate electrons in to the phosphorus, and effectively what that's going to do is it's going to basically kick off adenosine diphosphate as the leaving group. And so what you'll get after that cleavage step is a very strange species right here that we refer to as metaphosphate. We get metaphosphate and we also get adenosine diphosphate. Both of these molecules initially remain attached to the myosin. So notice if we go back here, this red circular structure right here, that's the phosphate. And this sort of yellow structure right here, that's the adenosine diphosphate. So notice these two molecules are still very much attached to the myosin. But in the case of phosphate, it's actually as the species metaphosphate, which is very strange. Go back here. So what's going to happen now is you're going to get cross bridge formation. Okay, the myosin will spontaneously attach to the myosin binding site on actin. Okay, and what you're going to get now is what they call phosphate dissociation. So that molecule right there that's dissociating is called phosphate. But that molecule that's dissociating, that's orthophosphate. Okay, so what has to happen is I have to take this metaphosphate and I have to generate orthophosphate. The way that occurs 
is through proton transfer by an unknown base in the myosin active site. So a base is going to deprotonate a water molecule. This is called the hydrolytic water molecule. And then these electrons are going to come out and nucleophilically attack the phosphorus. And that's going to generate the pretty typical tetrahedral shape of the orthophosphate. So that's what this molecule is down here. This is orthophosphate orthophosphate, in which case you'd write it as HPO4 2 minus, right? That's just phosphate. And we still have this adenosine diphosphate that's still attached to myosin. Okay, but the next step we just saw was phosphate release. Well, it turns out that when this phosphate gets released, it strengthens the myosin-actin interaction. And you'll actually see kind of it get more rigid in just a, in a second. And there you see it get more rigid. That's a strengthening of the bond. And now ADP is going to get released. So what we see here is that this adenosine diphosphate right here, this ADP will get released. In other words, ADP leaves in this step right here. Adenosine diphosphate leaves. And so what that causes is the power stroke. Okay, so go back here. We're going to see the power stroke. Very strong conformational change of myosin. Um, let's watch that one more time. ADP is going to dissociate. A change in conformation in myosin, very large one, is going to cause contraction of the, of the myosin head, which ultimately results in thin filament moving toward the M line. And you see this here in real time. Okay, just to do a very quick review, we'll kind of see it in just a minute, but if we look at the sarcomere level, notice if where my mouse is is the M line, okay, notice how when the myosin heads contract, they're going to be moving those yellow thin filaments ultimately towards the M line, and that represents contraction or shortening of the sarcomere, and if you have a whole bunch of these sarcomeres shortening, the whole muscle as a whole shortens, okay, or contracts. And so what you get at the very end of the cycle is you get the cross bridge still there, but of course ADP has dissociated and orthophosphate has also dissociated. So we have to go back up here with the cross bridge still, still made. And then of course our ATP has to come in and we get cross bridge detachment and that completes the cycle. So hopefully this mechanism made a little bit of sense. Um, this is just one of the proposed mechanisms for myosin. It tends to be the one that's um, most well thought of in current studies. See you in the next video.